All right, here we are, Hillbilly Roubaix, 10th annual. We are in beautiful core, West Virginia, and I don't know what I'm in for. You know, I've done a West Virginia Point Series a ton of times. I've done some of the hardest races in the world, um, but this one has just uh, never lined up on my calendar, so I'm excited to get the grail out, get out and play in the mud, got my mud tires, um, got my mud tires on the truck. You know, it's just about a can-do attitude, and I think that's uh, part of what I loved about racing in West Virginia back in my early days, trying to make it as a pro. I was a 19-year-old kid, had to win gas money to get back, um, but I did it, you know, and I, I traveled the world and raced my bike, and uh, you know, the can-do attitude of West Virginia served me well. Served me well when things weren't going right, and uh, serves me better when they're going good. So, hoping to have a great day out here, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a tough race, um, but it's gonna be a fun one. Rider, in a very short time, you will no longer have to pedal that bike. Top of the hill, make a left, and you will be finished with the 2019 Hilly Billy Roubaix. mud bogs uh, and even on the dirt road section there'll be sections where there's a little bit of a cone sticking up out of a hole and you're like oh my gosh it's a two foot tall yeah. cone in the pothole so um, yeah just uh, an amazing race can't believe I won I'm ecstatic Oh man, wow, that was a lung blaster. Uh, I don't even know how I won that. Um, so we had a lead group that formed early on. We were sticking together on the roads and there's a lot of drafting and bike racing even on a gravel race like this because a third of the course or so is on these um, back country roads. Really rough, sandy, gravelly with big construction rocks and um, you know, probably another third of the course is on um, just really rough Jeep style trail. Uh, and then just, you know, bedrock sticking out. And um, there are a few little sections or sectors of like this mud. I mean, so it was like ATV trail with uh, splash puddles and deep bogs and holes and you have to get on and off the bike. And um, yeah, it was one of those things where um, I saw Brian Lewis was riding some very slick tires, like road tires. I mean, they're a little bit bigger, 35C. Um, and I was going for the little more tready tire, so um, I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna ride the downhills at my speed, uh, make him catch up um, on all the straightaways and just put some pressure on him that way. <clears throat> was, uh, I knew he was the guy to beat here. And um, yeah, just flatted, you know? I, I was riding through the shadows um, on this Jeep trail and going down these whoops and sort of tank traps. And uh, I guess it was just a brick-sized rock. Pinched the front, flatted it, you know, and then I hit it with this thing, which foamed up and really didn't do much of anything. Uh, and then I was like, well, I gotta put a tube in it. Um, if anybody's watched road racing, pretty much like the pack is gone. Like, so they checked out and I'm like, well, maybe I just have fun today and maybe chase really hard and maybe I can catch a few people and get back on the podium. Because the guys in the front don't have a problem, no way I can win. So I put the tube in, 
you know, I probably was four minutes back at that point. Hopped back on the bike and chased and chased and chased. And uh, I felt pretty good though, uh, you know, and I was going through groups and, you know, not, not stopping at each group. Like I felt strong enough, I would catch people on these uh, rolling sections and steep climbs and, and just blow straight through them. So I had a good feeling that I was gonna be able to claw my way back up to maybe fourth, maybe fifth. Um, and then I got to uh, a really steep wall. I mean, there's a lot of steep stuff out there, but there's one wall that was just like construction rocks and really slow and, and I was riding it pretty good. And I asked one of the guys that I was riding with, um, uh, Brian Schwarm, how far ahead are the leaders? He's like, well, they're just up there. They uh, you know, just got away from us. They're maybe a minute ahead. And I'm like, no, I, I didn't believe him because you know, this is no way after an hour and a half of, of chasing that I'm actually gonna catch up with the lead guys. And um, sure enough, we come down to a, a couple dirt road sections. Uh, Tim Mitchell flatted from CCB. Um, so hopped back on the road with him, worked with him a little bit. And then we turned a corner to a long paved climb and I could see Brian uh, and his buddy who was on a mountain bike up there um, just ahead and they were the leaders. So I was like, wow, we're racing again, you know? I'm gonna be blown out and I'll probably get third out of the, the you know, three up and, but that's pretty darn good, you know, after all that happened. So, um, yeah, the pace was, you know, just steady, but not really hard. So it allowed me to hydrate and fuel up and um, sure enough, Brian attacked on the last big climb. I knew it was gonna come somewhere and, you know, he's got, uh, yeah, it's a lot of horsepower started to pull a little bit of a gap, 10 seconds or so, and uh, we started going through these mud holes and just trying to concentrate because we're just going as hard as we can and, you know, uh, stair-stepping up to the top of the last climb, and he pulls over. He's flatted. And I'm like, no way! Okay, so I'm just going to keep riding my pace, just like as if I were chasing him. So I just went as hard as I could, and, uh, you know, I got it just by a few seconds. So real nail-biter race. Can't believe I won 10th annual Hillbilly Rebay. Um, you know, heard about this event a lot over the years. It carries reputation for being muddy. As you can see, my bike is a filthy mess. Um, but the canyon worked great. The grail was awesome. And she came out on top. So, super stoked. Jeremiah Bishop! Yeah. 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 Yeah.